So I was curious, you know, years of working with some of the best filmmakers, John Singleton, Paul Thomas Anderson, Warren Beatty, Brian De Palma, what did you pick up from watching them, from being on set with them that carried over into Miles Ahead? Bad drinking habit. <laughs> <laughs> no, just really, you know, from the best ones, I think there is uh, two things. They're very clear about what they want and uh, have a very strong game plan and understand how they're going to approach their work and execute it and what role everyone plays and what the arc of the entire story is. But secondly, they're malleable and able to be permeable and hear good ideas and be collaborative and be in a spirit of best answer wins. So I think when you have those two things working for you and you've hired keys and, and your cast members and all of the supportive team that you've picked well, then you let them do their job and don't attempt to micromanage every single decision and trust that you will be better in the sum of your parts than you would be individually. Yeah, uh, uniquely like when you worked with Warren Beatty who was acting and directing the film, that's what you're doing in Miles Ahead. Yeah. Um, how do you turn off that sort of switch in the back of your mind when you know, you're acting in a scene, you're focused on what you're doing, but yet you have all these other variables that you also have to control? Well, I think you just, like I said, you have to trust your team. And you have to be able to communicate clearly. Like I, you know, I used to tell them uh, what it was that I wanted the scene, how I wanted the scene to be accomplished, what I wanted to be accomplished in the scene, what the goal of the scene was. Prior to shooting, we would have a meeting, and I'd go, "This is what the scene is about. These are the character arcs. This is what has to be accomplished by each of these characters, and this is where we have to start, and this is where we have to end." And if you don't feel that, Rose, behind the monitor, being our script supervisor, if you don't feel that, Pam, if you don't feel that, Ewan, in the scene, if you're not feeling that, Roberto is the DP, anybody here can call, uh, hold it, bullshit, I don't feel that. And we can go back and figure that out. Because this is about a collaboration, and you guys all have to play your respective positions and, and have my back. Yeah, no, I think that's a great attitude to have, sort of treating filmmaking as a team sport. Everybody ha shares that responsibility. Well, it can be, a, a, if it's not a team sport, I've also seen it go the other way where people start, you know, dragging their heels or worse, just undermining you because why would you hire someone who you think is very talented and then try to tell them how to do every part of their job? It's like, you play special effects. I don't play special effects. I'm playing Miles. So you handle that and let me respond and react to what your good work is. Yeah. Uh, lastly, I was just curious if there was anything you learned in the editing process that you felt was very important. Uh, keep a vomit bucket really close because it's very nerve-wracking and, and it's, it's, but it's also fantastic and wonderful. It's the third opportunity you have to make your movie and you can be saved in editing by a good editor and all of those pieces that have to come on at the end to, to flush that thing out and create the thing that you eventually have can be done in editorial. So it, it can be challenging, but ultimately, if you have a good one, and we did, John Axelrad and Kayla Emtor, his uh, second, uh, they, they made everything better.